Kana, Bridge of Spirits walkthrough. We are finally nearing the end of what's basically chapter one. And this means that we're now going to see the main formula that the rest of the game is going to follow, which means that we have to discover where the missing people are and discover some relics to free their souls. And that's kind of what's going on. So here we're still working on freeing Taro's soul, and even though this video is something like 15-ish minutes long, maybe more, there's not really a whole lot of, like, gameplay to the video other than getting to the final boss. Not the final boss, but the boss of Taro's, um chapter end and then defeating that boss and that's going to be most of the video <laughs> once you see the rest of it will be mostly cutscene so there's going to be kind of like a aura of taro there he's going to get that whatever it's called that lamp he's going to light that lamp up and then we're going to walk over to this other lamp which is missing a friend and we're going to tell our rot to drag it over And once that happens, a crystal is going to show up on the tree that we're going to shoot. And then you're just going to follow the sparkly little butterflies, or whatever they are, and shoot them through the forest. We're going to want to go to the right side once we hit that one. And run around here. I went the long way. And then we can keep hitting these crystals. Just follow those, um, whatever they're called, <laughs> sparkles, until we get into this big rot-infested area. And with that last crystal, that should open up the corruption here. We can blow up that flower. And it'll be yet another shrine. And who's going to be waiting for us but Rusu? I found Taro's lantern. He must have lost it searching for the children. Bring the relics to the fallen tree. It's time to help Taro find peace. And as Rusu instructed, we now have all the relics which we've had yeah and uh we need to bring him to the fallen tree but first there's going to be a chest over here that we can open up that'll just give us a hat i think it's like a what pine cone hat or something like that yep pine cone and then when we walk through the gateway here we can drop on down so that's kind of a shortcut also the point of no return well, I mean, you can get back there if you want to, but it's just sort of like you can't go back up once you <laughs> once you fall down that. And then there's going to be a cursed chest. So this one is we have to defeat five enemies or something like that in less than 40 seconds. And this one's pretty easy. Um, I think a sprout. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> he spawns kind of out of nowhere and with no warning just kind of whacked me in the back and took out like a fourth of my health. So that was lovely. But we have a lot more power-ups to use against them now. We have bows and arrows, we have the rot that we can just send freely to him. And we, I also bought this upgrade, which is like a smash with the heavy attack. So when you charge up a heavy attack, you can push R. It'll spend one of your rot points and just do a heck of a lot of damage to anything far away from you. And I'm actually kind of handicapping myself a lot in this game. Near the end of it, you'll see me using power-ups a lot more frequently but especially early on I tend to stick to the really basic stuff and that's totally my fault like I am handicapping myself there but that's just kind of how a lot of these games go and because it's so short you know by the time you get good at using all the power-ups available to you you finish the game and if it were another game then you'd have a heck of a lot more hours to get you know practice getting really good at it or if I played this game twice but this is technically my first playthrough <laughs> Okay, so here's the Forgotten Tree, and we'll watch the cutscene and get ready for the boss.
not, I somehow managed to defeat this guy on my first attempt. So this is Corrupt Taro. We'll see his lantern that is flying around his neck. And there's also a flower on his shoulder that we can send some rot to. And that does do a decent chunk of damage, but it also extinguishes his lantern, which is really going to be his only super weak point from this point onward. And right there, he got kind of got stuck on this rock. I think he's stuck in the trees because he can't really get to me, but as he attacks, he seems to move out of the way so he gets back to normal. And if you saw him holding his face there, that's because I shot his lantern the second that it came back to light, and that stunned him for a little bit. And there we go, he does a charge, he gets himself free, and now we can actually start attacking the guy. So he's got a whole lot of attacks that are pretty much copies of the same thing. It's mostly just some variation of a sword swipe, and you're looking for opportunities to shoot that lantern around his neck. And you want to get a pretty full charge, because as soon as you shoot it, he'll be stunned for a while, and you'll actually be able to get in close and attack him. But, in usual Dark Souls copycat fashion, if you attack him too long, he's just gonna do moves that hurt you and ruin your day. And that one, I don't know how on earth I lived through that, somehow I did. He's gonna swipe at us a ton of times and jab his sword into the ground, and you can actually destroy his sword when his sword is uh, impaled into the floor. And then he's going to start running around the arena and randomly charging you. Although it's probably not random, but he will eventually charge you. And when he does charge you, you're going to want to try to shoot his lantern just so he gets stunned, knocked over to the side, and then repeat that a bunch of times. And I think it's showing up somewhat annoyingly on the screen, but every time that I do something that involves an explosion with this guy, I get a massive frame drop. So that was kind of a frustrating thing with fighting this guy, because normally I get easily like 60 plus frames a second. It was just anytime there's like these random sudden explosions in Kenna, my frames just disintegrate. I don't know why. And I did make this boss somewhat less fun, because I imagine all these moves look really cool when you can actually see them. And now that I'm seeing them again on the recording, it is a lot better, but it's still kind of frustrating that I had to go through that while I was playing the game. And he's of course going to have a grab attack where he just charged me, and you kind of want to be careful with the timing of his lantern, because if he doesn't have his lantern burning while he charges you, then obviously you're not going to be able to shoot it to stun him. Do that enough times, and he will die. And there we go, the first chapter of Kena is complete, and the rest of the video is basically just cutscene. sickness that took our parents was spreading through the village. Spirits of the forest, walk with our people. Guide them on their journey to the mountain shrine. Food was running low. Everyone was scared. I never felt so helpless. Saya wanted to stay, but I thought we could go to Rusu for help. I was sure he would know what to do. But something was not right in the woods. I had never seen Rusu so worried. He sent us back to the village. And I knew we were alone. I was all that Benny and Saya had left. I had to protect them.
happened the next morning. from the mountain shrine covered the land in darkness. everywhere for them. I was their older brother. I was supposed to protect them. Even now, it's hard to forgive myself. Taro... The children know how much you care for them. What happened in the village wasn't your fault. You will always be their older brother, and they still need you. It's okay. You have to go now. <laughs> 